Now let's move on to this thing that's been on everybody's mind over the past couple of weeks, which is NASA's Mars Curiosity rover landing on Mars successfully. Now, I was a little bit of a naysayer when it came to the whole sky crane thing. I thought it was a dangerous system. I thought it might fail. I thought it might destroy the spacecraft. I just thought that there was a million things that could possibly go wrong. And I didn't really want to get my hopes up about the whole thing because I'd already been devastated by the Phobos grunt mission not being able to even get out of orbit. So, but that wasn't the case. Everything was completely successful and it was an awesome freaking landing. We're safe on Mars. And Mars Curiosity is going to be able to tell us a lot of cool things about Mars, whether or not that it had large amounts of liquid water in the past, whether or not it could still support water, whether or not that, that certain conditions that would be favorable to life ever did exist on Mars. And this is important for us to find out, because if it did exist on Mars, in my mind that means that it possibly could exist again, whether through our help with terraforming or just through nature's process. Now, you can go ahead and say that Mars is a dead planet, and it always has been, but I remain hopeful that humans will eventually go there one day and start messing around with the composition of the atmosphere and what's in the soil and start changing Mars. So before I get way too caught up in those details and future thinking, I just wanted to say that I think it's hilarious that the thing that the general public has taken away from this mission the most is the Mohawk guy. I mean, have you seen some of the memes about this guy? And some people have made some pretty cool artwork with our friend the Mohawk guy. But enough about Mohawk guy, let's move on. So what's Curiosity up to now? Right now it's parked because it's testing out a lot of the uh, cameras and instruments on its robotic arm, making sure that everything will work, making sure that everything's calibrated correctly, so that when they go to their first science destination, which is a little area called Glen Elg, um, they, everything will be ready to go for the first initial test that they're going to start doing to find out the composition of the, the rock minerals and materials nearby, and like I mentioned earlier, looking for signs of past or present water. Something cool that's going to be happening over the next couple of days is Curiosity is going to be stopping briefly to take pictures of Phobos and Deimos because they will be passing overhead. So that should uh, yield some pretty cool pictures from that. So amidst all the excitement for Curiosity, NASA has already selected the next couple of missions to Mars. The first one being the MAVEN Orbiter, which stands for the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution. And it's going to not only be replacing some of the aging satellites, but it's also going to be taking a look at the atmosphere of Mars and determining why the atmosphere is the way it is, why most of it has escaped, if there ever was more gases there, and why Mars has lost a lot of its water. Now, um, hopefully Curiosity is going to give us a lot of information and help us to, to learn a lot of those similar things, but MAVEN will accentuate and complement that data and, and help us to just learn more. MAVEN is going to be launching in 2013 and will pave the way for the next lander to Mars. The lander, which will launch in 2016, is called the InSight Lander, which stands for Interior Exploration and Seismic Investigations, Geodesy, and Heat Transportation. And with a seismometer and heat flow probe will help NASA to understand Mars' geological evolution, which will also help us to understand the other terrestrial planets in our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, the Moon, and, you know, understand how the inner solar system evolved, which can have very important implications for us and just science in general. I think it's great that the Mars program is ramping up, we're already working on the next couple of missions, and the plan is for every single launch window where the least amount of Delta V required to get to Mars opens, uh, we're going to be sending a mission. And NASA's not the only one who has future plans for Mars. The European Space Agency has their whole ExoMars program, which is going to consist of an orbiter and a lander. They used to be partnered with NASA for that whole program, but NASA pulled out. And so they are trying to partner with Russia, and so far Russia has responded positively, and they're already working together on what they could use and which hardware just it's how they can help each other to succeed in this mission. Russia has their own independent plans of several landers and a sample return mission from Mars but with their whole track record there you can never be too hopeful but I'm very enthusiastic and supportive of all of Russia's plans and hope that you guys can catch up with NASA. India even wants to send their own orbiter to Mars and if they succeed they would have beaten China and Japan who have both tried and failed to send missions to Mars. So as someone who's enthusiastic towards all space projects I really hope that India succeeds in that mission. So as for right now, I'll talk about any sort of cool updates that come out for Curiosity, and uh, there's lots of other things that I want to talk about. So I will see you guys again very soon, and uh, lots of really cool things that we want to talk about. Next video, I'm going to be talking about the CCI Cap Award announcements. Woo! So in the meantime, you guys take care of yourselves, live long and prosper, and don't forget, add Astra to the stars.